子。Uh, in the following one hour, we have two talks about integrating the zero knowledge technology into machine learning fields. So, first one, we have Cassie So from Ethereum Foundation Privacy and Scaling Exploration Team uh, to talk about the present reality and the future horizons uh, in privacy preserving AIs. So, uh, welcome, Kelsey. Um, well, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, this is a rather ambitious topic to be done in 20 minutes for sure. So what I hope to achieve at least is for those of you who are totally new to ZKML, this topic, a brief understanding. And for those of you who are eager and interested to get in, I will also provide some kind of like directions or hopefully inspiration. So uh, this is the layout of the talk. So I will go through what is ZKML. So don't worry if you don't know what it already is. Uh, and then I'll talk, briefly talk about things that has been done in this field, including things that I have done and also things that other teams or other protocols have done. Uh, and then uh, at the third part, I will talk about what can be done. So uh, some of the research initiatives that we are hoping that either our team or someone else can go ahead and research and try to achieve those. So this is a layout. Uh, so let's start with the first thing, which is, well, what is ZKML? So well, without talking about the implementation, let's first just assume that we already know how to do ZKML, OK? which is we have some ZKP circuit that performs neural network uh, model prediction, right? So that neural network could be something as simple as a classifier, can be something that is face recognition, biometric authentication, stable diffusion, GPT, whatever model you want to plug in here, okay? So let's say we have that, then what else like, can we do with this, right? So, well, there are three things that, three types of data that is involved in this kind of design, right? You have the input data. So in the case for facial recognition, that will be your face, the picture of your face. In the case of a LLM, that would be like a prompt, okay? And you also have some kind of model weight, right? So that will be something that, for example, OpenAI will hold a lot of very precious model weights that needs to run their model. And then you will have some kind of output, right? So for classifier, it will be one or zero, or you can have other data type as well. So, well, first of all, we need ZK because it doesn't make sense. Well, we need ZK, but we don't want everything to be private, right? So think about the case where everything is private. Then it doesn't make sense because I'm just telling you that I have some model that does something, and then here's the output, right? It's meaningless. So we need to at least have some public uh, data. So the first use case of CKML is that you hold the model weights public, and then you hold the input data private. Okay, so what there's a lot more use case I'll talk about in a bit, but the, perhaps the easiest way to understand it is um, face recognition, right? So you don't want to put your facial features onto the chain, but there is someone who have built a very good facial recognition model that everyone trusts. Right? So if I put my face through this model and got some output, that output people should also be able to trust. Okay, so that's the first use case. The second use case is actually the other way around. So you can have some public input data, but a private model weight. So for example, um, model weight is perhaps one of the most precious assets that companies have nowadays, Web2 companies have nowadays. It takes million and million dollars to train a model, and pretty much it all comes down to model weights. Especially nowadays, a lot of the architecture of the model is the same. Well, how do I actually hide my model weights or keep my model proprietary while also having a trusted computation, right? So how do I not share my model with everyone, but everyone would trust that whenever they use our surface, is using the same model and the same model weights every time. So the way to do that is, well, we will have some private model weights, right? And then everyone can run their data using some company that is providing this model as a surface. 
Um, and since the input data is public, you can make sure that it is your data that you wanted to put through. Right? So for example, um, a good, good uh, example might be for stable diffusion. Okay? So right now, of course, there's a lot of open source um, uh, like hugging face that you can produce your own model. Uh, sorry, can, you can run your own model and then like, generate an image. But there's also other service like Midjourney or some other provider, they kind of hide their model, right? So you don't really know what is going on under the hood. Uh, so for this use case, at least what you know is the company is being consistent every time that they're running the same model, right? They're not telling you what the model is, but at least they're running the same model over and over again to provide you that service. Right. So. Well, there are th these are just like a few use cases that is probably more close to home for you. Um, so for the private input public model uh, use case, the most, um, I guess, relatable one is probably biometric authentication. All right, so now that we have smart contract wallet, is it possible to have biometric authentication for smart wallets? Right, so well, how do we not disclose our own biometric data and have that? Well, you need CKML or any other kind of CK proof, right? It doesn't have to be uh, machine learning specifically, but you need some sort of CK proof in order to process that data and prove it on chain. Or um, another way is you can have a private image or data marketplace, right? So I want to sell an image to you. Uh, how do I prove that I have some image of some property? For example, the size, or I want to show you that what I want to sell you is a photo of a cat Right? But if I already show you the picture directly, then you can just right click and save or screenshot. So I need some kind of CKML to hide that input, but then at the same time reveal some information to you. Um, and then on the other hand, for the public input private model um, use case, um, the most relatable one is probably Kaggle. Um, anyone have heard of Kaggle from the, great. So, Machine learning people uh, well, or other Web2 companies will probably know very familiar with Kaggle. Um, so Kaggle is a kind of a bounty platform that companies can set up competition that people can submit their machine learning models to. The only problem, though, is that in order for your model to be evaluated by the Kaggle platform, you need to submit your whole source code. Right, so you're only trusting that with Kaggle's privacy policy or whatever, they are not leaking it. But in a way, you're basically handing over your model before even winning any prize, right? So with CKML, what you can do is actually make sure that you won the prize first by committing some model, right? And then using CKML to prove its accuracy. And that only after you win, um, you send over your actual model. So uh, this is actually what I've done um, with PSE as a kind of proof of concept, which is based on the decentralized Kaggle idea. Sorry, I saw people taking pictures. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, well, I'll provide the link to this in a bit. The diagram is just here for showing. Don't worry about it. The main point is on the right, left-hand side here. Um, so, well, what does it take to build a decentralized Kaggle in a way? Um, so, of course, first of all, you need to have some kind of CK library for machine learning. Okay, so that was the first step. Uh, I primarily use the language Circum. So I have like a Circum lib, which is Circum library for all the machine learning layers. So you will quickly realize that this might not be very scalable because there are so many layers in TensorFlow or PyTorch. Essentially, every single of those, you have to build a custom template or circuit. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, the second component is a translator or a transpiler that translate a Python model into a CKP circuit, right? So that is to ease the onboarding of Web2 developers. You have a model. You don't need to know how to build CKP circuit. There is tools that transpile it for you. Um, so that's what I've built with only certain supporting layers, of course, at this stage. Uh, but so that, that is kind of just to ease the onboarding of Web2 or machine learning developers. And then last but not least, the actual decentralized Kaggle, uh, which is really a POC at this stage. And it's a platform that you can host bounty. So the bounty provider can uh, post a bounty onto a smart contract. 
uh, and then the smart contract will be able to verify the accuracy. Um, the bounty provider will also have to release the bounty, uh, and at the end, when the bounty is released, um, the bounty hunter, when they claim the money, they will also send the encrypted model weight over. So it's a little bit like an escrow, but this escrow is secured by CKML. So no one, like, yes, they cannot go through. It's, okay, it's possible that they would not go through with the process, but if they didn't go through with the process, no one gained anything that is not uh, that, 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 uh, to their benefits, right? So they only if they carry out the whole process, then the model weights and the money is exchanged. Um, I will link to the, this project uh, a little bit later. So this is kind of what I have built so far. Um, but I also want to talk about like, what other teams have built and how does this all come together. So basically, this only shows that this is a use case, right? But we are still very far from actually making or realizing it. So for example, on my C Kaggle, the only model that you can trade right now is a model that identified MNIST data set. Okay, so for, the, for people who don't know what the MNIST data set is, it's basically a, black and, a data set of black and white images that is 28 by 28, black and white with handwritten digits. All right, so this is like the size of the models that we can trade um, on this platform right now. Uh, and that's because of two different things. Oh, right. Before I go on to that, um, I always forgot this is, there's this slide because I just recently added it. Um, I used to think of ZKML just for privacy. And this is a use case that I recently just realized that is much more feasible in the short run, which is, well, what if we just have everything public? Right? You might wonder, wait, what? I thought you were talking about ZKML, privacy. Why everything public? Well, the easiest thing is we can run a machine learning model in Solidity. Well, at least not a big one, right? We can probably run linear regression or something like that. So we do need some form of a roll up, even for computation. So the third use case of ZKML is just make it like a roll up, but a roll up for computation, right? Not a roll up for chain. So you can do some off-chain computation or machine learning, uh, it's OK to make everything public. All you want to show is that I have done this computation correctly. And then I can commit that result onto the chain. So that's like the third use case that I just uh, recently added, because I think in the short run, this is much more feasible. And there's a reason why I say this is more feasible than the other use cases in the short term. Um, to know that, we have to go to the challenges of CKML. So I hope it's not too small. I, I I'll read it out. Um, so there is actually ma two main challenges when you say you want to do CKML or you want to get a model into a CKP circuit. So first thing is machine learning is in floating point weights. In fact, it all relies on uh, floating point weights in order to do all the gradient to get very small kind of updates and propagation uh, and of the of the network. Whereas in CKP circuit, we do fixed point arithmetic, right? So there's a conversion of that, and actually there's a lot of ways to do it. The main two ways is you scale it up and truncate the decimal numbers, or you just quantize it. Right, so you find the minimum and the maximum of the range, and then you splice, slice them into uh, bins. Uh, the other thing is, of course, it's very hard to have very deep model or very big model because the size of the circuit will be huge, which typically improve, uh, in, increase prover time. Well, so what has been done to solve these two problems? So this is uh, everything up to like 10 months ago. So actually, two years ago, we only started with linear regression. OK, so these are all the GitHub links in case anyone is interested in the code base. So two years ago, we only started with linear regression. It's written in CIRCOM. And then half a year later, there's a group in 0x Park that did a MNIST model, so a convolutional network, but they kind of only put it this dense layer, the last layer on CKML, right? So you do everything until the last layer, and then you hide the last layer. Uh, and then what I have done is um, 
before the project I just mentioned is to just try as a proof of concept to put the full convolutional neural network um, uh, to do, uh, on, onto a CKP circuit. Okay, but from here, actually, we have moved very fast in the past few months. So in the past few months, um, uh, Peiyuan's group has uh, successfully done a, done a quantized AIGC, so AI-generated content. Uh, so AI-generated model, uh, as NF so minting it as NFTs. Right? So um, actually, a lot of people, when they hear of quantization, they worry about, oh, isn't it bad, especially for big models? Actually, it's the exact opposite. Uh, bigger models are way better with like quantization and stuff. Well, and then there's also two groups that focus on like Halo 2 circuits. Um, and then the major updates is that you're able to get very, very large uh, model onto CKP. The only problem though is that yes, it's possible to implement these very large model, especially for example, GPT-2, as you can see here, but it's not feasible for client side. So right now, um, I don't think, I, it's, I'm not sure if it's the exact number, but from what I recall, Daniel's group say that in order to run a GPT, in order to prove a GPT-2 model in CKP, you need around one terabyte of RAM. Right, RAM, not hard disk space. So that means that you need something that's on the server side, right? So that goes back to why I think the third use case is actually more feasible. Because if you don't need privacy at this moment, then it's completely okay to do ZKML on the server side. Whereas if you want client side ZKML, then we are still a little bit far from that. Right, so well, then what's next, right? So I've presented what's happening so far. So what's next is that, well, we are having a research initiatives in ZKML at PSE. And here are some of the directions that I have identified recently. Um, and if anyone wants to kind of read the whole read up, they can go to the hack MD. Um, so, sorry if the text is a little bit small, but first of all is benchmarking. So currently, when you benchmark CKML, people use benchmarking that is typically done for CK circuits, right? So you just ca care about prover time or verifier time. But there's another dimension when it comes to CKML, which is the model itself. Especially, we mentioned that, well, we need to quantize or truncate the model weights. Then it affects the model performance, right, up to a certain extent. So how do we actually measure that? How do we measure the effect, the effect of different quantization method? So that's one key kind of benchmarking area that must be added into CKML uh, research. The second uh, direction is CK friendliness. So CK friendliness is um, basically, well, we know floating point isn't CK friendly. Is there any other machine learning paradigms that will make it more CK friendly? So there is, in fact, if you go back to the literature in the 70s, there's a lot of models using integer weights, right? They have all kind of like been taken over by neural networks because neural network is so powerful. But it's not saying that for some use cases, for example, for identifying fingerprints, it's like integer model is actually very powerful. So to identify like CK friendly models could be one direction as well. Um, and then there's two areas that I would like to kind of focus on um, at the last bit of the talk today, which is folding and model secrecy. So I will just go to the next slide and talk about folding. So folding is a rather new kind of um, research in the field of CKP that allows us to fold, or basically fold similar structured CKP, uh, ZK proof or CKP circuit into a smaller size. So basically in O1 with a small overhead. Okay, so well, what could you do with folding in terms of CKML? So, well, the first thing you do, uh, we can do, which a, another project, uh, Zader, has already done, is to fold a model, right? So if we design the model such that each block is exactly the same kind of structure, then we can just fold the model vertically, as in you can compress the model so that 512 becomes 256 or actually even smaller. 
Well, the problem with that, uh, I said here, might be impractical, is because, um, well, it's hard to tell a Web2 or a machine learning company, hey, so we have this CK paradigm, like, can you change your model's architecture such that it works for folding? Right? So a lot of things is in machine learning is accuracy driven. And most of the time, convolution network actually looks, the shape looks like this. Right? You're trying to shape down in order to amplify this signal. So model folding could be impractical. Whereas for batch inference, which is if you want to apply the same model over and over again onto a large data set, right? so for example, 1,000 pictures or 10,000 pictures, Essentially, that could be another application of folding, where you just fold a lot of those inference into one single proof with a small size. So that would require kind of minimum machine learning modifications. Of course, the downside for that is that in order to have that like 1,000, 10,000 like incremental computation on the RAM, that's another kind of hardware limitation or hardware requirement that we need to look for. Right. In view of time, I will quickly talk about the last bit, which is, well, this is kind of the last slide, which is model secrecy. And I put true ZKML here because what we know as ZKML today, the only part that is not a secret is the model architecture itself, okay? which is okay for some of the newer models. right? For example, we know that for GPT, what's precious, what's expensive is the weight, not the architecture. Right? OpenAI can publish a paper and tell you all about the architecture, but as long as they have the weights, well, we cannot do anything about it. But for some smaller model, we actually need model secrecy. And the way we can do it is we need to have some form of functional commitment. So that means you are able to have a ID or a hash that represents what the circuit or what the function does. And so how do we actually hide the circuit? Well, there's a lot of different approach. Perhaps one of the answer or solution could be a CKVM. Um, and of course, there's also other study about like MPC, whether we can do federated learning and verifiable training. That's perhaps not just something that can be answered by CKML, but it has to go with MPC or homomorph fully homomorphic encryption. Right? So these are other area of research as well. Right. So. Um, and I think we really need model secrecy in order to achieve like actual real CKML. Right, so um, well, this kind of wraps up to the end of my presentation today. Um, if anyone wants to kind of see the projects that I've mentioned just now, this is the link tree, well, my link tree. Uh, there's like a lot of GitHub or the PSE articles that I've written. Uh, and I uh, welcome any questions. Uh, any questions for Cassie? Uh, stop, stop. Oh, okay, many. Uh, hi. So, about federal learning, I was thinking about if we let uh, anybody can provide their learning you know, things so everyone can learn, the, can train the model and uh, provide the weight back to the maybe on the blockchain, so it makes everyone can train the model. But also they have to prove that they are train it, training it in a correct way. And I'm thinking, is it possible to do that currently, or what are the main changes or consideration if we want to do a decentralized learning for the model? You mean for ZK machine learning specifically, right? Or just federated learning speci uh, generally? Uh, I think for machine learning or for, uh, uh, we need many computation power to learn the model. So um, making everyone can contribute their computation power, but they also need to prove that they are training it in the correct way. And I want to ask, is it possible now, or what are the changes that may involved in? Yeah, so actually, if you were not talking about CK, it's already achieved. There's a paper on nature called, I forgot the whole title, but if you search like swarm learning, 
nature, you could find a paper. Uh, the only problem with federated learning now is that people are studying whether from the updates alone, you can find out about the original training set. So this is actually uh, a field of research right now. There is speculation that you can indeed recover some of the information about the training data, uh, which is kind of why we need encryption or ZK uh, to make it really secure. But, uh, but otherwise, we're not talking about ZK or encryption. Uh, it's already been done currently. Yeah. Then any other questions? Thank, <clears throat> thanks for the presentation today. It was really great. Um, before, when our company operated our own validated, uh, validated roll-up, like one of the main blockers that we had was the proving system. Like it uh, needed a huge computation power to do the actual ZKP proof generation. So I do think this really has a very big use case. However, like in terms of this to be really used as a real product, um, I do see some research being done in this space to uh, verify, make a proof in a more efficient way, like using a distributed system. Like, what do you think are the steps that we need to go through to use this for the mass public? Or, like, what are the processes that are needed to be optimized to actually use this in our, like, daily life, like Kaggle is doing? Yeah, so, well, um, CKP acceleration is not really my expertise, but I, from what I've, like, discuss with other people, I, I mean, there's two main direction, right? Hardware and software. So uh, on the hardware side, of course, you can build like uh, FPGA, ASIC, or GPU. Actually, a newer thought, school of thoughts I've heard of is, what if we have different hardware for different part of, or different operations in CK? So that's another, uh, well, I'm not too familiar with it, but just to provide kind of like a food for thought. Um, and at least for what I'm concerned with, I think, um, well, two direction is, first of all, to make things CK friendly, uh, which I think could be very helpful and have a very immediate effect. Uh, but at the same time, like we do a lot of, like PSE does a lot of um, research just to how to accelerate like cryptographically as well. So yeah, there's a, like, I guess many directions you can do to accelerate that. Cool, thank you. Maybe one last question, if any. Yeah. With homomorphic encryption, is it possible to train the model with the proof itself? I'm not sure what what proof you're referring to I in mean, this case. I uh, mean, to gather like the, uh, the the proof without the in, uh, using input as secret to train the model. So when company gather the information or data, they don't need to know the, the, the what's the, the exact data from user. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think um, maybe to kind of sum it up, I think people ask me what's the difference between like fully homomorphic encrypted ML and CKML. Usually my short answer is if the same person holds the data and the model, you do CKML, like the same entity holds the model and the data, you do CKML. If different entities hold the data and the model, you do a, I guess, FHE ML. So that's how I think about it. So yeah, it's, there, there are companies or protocols studying that. I'm not sure if it's realized yet for the encrypted version. Okay, thanks, Cassie. And uh, let's shout out to Cassie again. Okay. Oh, one last thing. Sorry, I, I don't know if anyone collect POAP, but I have a personal POAP. If anyone wants to stay connected or anything, uh, just come to me and I will let you scan. Cool. Oh. Thank you.